Hello and welcome to this video lecture. This is Dr. Nishant Barapatre and I will take you through the consumer rights which have been established by the Consumer Protection Act in India. However, we will investigate these consumer rights from the viewpoint of medical science taking the patients into consideration and thereby this study would reveal how these consumer rights were already granted to the patients in ancient India. It has been a while since I have conducted this study with the help of my mentor Dr. Vishnu Joglekar and it has already been published as a review article in July to December 2016 issue of IU Journal of Research in Ayurveda. You can easily refer to this article using the quick response code or digital object identifier for additional details. It is also available on the journal's website as well as on PubMed with free access to full text. As we have seen in the last video lecture about chronological evolution to Consumer Protection Act, the medical profession has gradually evolved from very ancient times to the present day scenario which is dominated by the Consumer Protection Act. Though this Consumer Protection Act was formulated in the year 1986, the medical profession has been brought under the purview of this act since 1995. In the draft of Consumer Protection Act, we find an extensive definition of a consumer according to the law. However, from the viewpoint of medical science, it would be better to avoid the complex legal language and therefore the dictionary meaning would also be sufficient for this purpose. According to the Oxford English Dictionary, a consumer is one who purchases goods or pays for services. Therefore, all the patients making payments for availing the health services have been brought under the definition of consumer by this act. The introduction of Consumer Protection Act in India in the year 1986 was mainly intended to protect the six rights of consumers which have been prescribed in the draft of this act. However, the foundation of these rights was already led by the former President of United States, Mr. John F. Kennedy, who outlined four basic rights of a consumer while addressing to the United States Congress. Later on, the International Organization of Consumers Union made additions to it and specified eight rights of consumers in 1983. These eight rights of consumers are inclusive of the six rights which have been later indexed in the Consumer Protection Act. These eight consumer rights specified by International Organization of Consumers Union include the right to safety, the right to be informed, the right to choose, the right to be heard, the right to redress, the right to consumer education, the right to a healthy environment and the right to satisfaction of basic needs. Out of these, the first six have been prescribed by Consumer Protection Act in India as well, while the last two rights are specified exclusively by the International Organization of Consumers Union only. However, if we study the ancient Indian texts of Ayurveda like Samhita written by Sitcharaka, Sushruta and Vagbhata and ancient texts of law and justice like Narad Smruti and Kautilya Arthashastra, we find the references of these rites in a quite similar way. 
Most of these references are seen in Ayurvedic texts in the form of the rights allotted to the patients. So, now let's have a look at each consumer right and its references in ancient texts with respect to the patients. The first and foremost right of a consumer is the right to safety. The consumers have a right to be protected against the products, production processes and services which are hazardous to their health and dangerous to the life. The scope of this right is broad enough so that it includes consumers long term interests and not only the immediate ones. In Ayurvedic Samhita texts, we find a number of references which point out towards the safety of patients during the course of treatment and also to keep them healthy in day to day life. In Charak Samhita Sutrasthan, it has been stated that the food to be consumed should be such that it should maintain the health of a healthy person and it should not create any new diseases to him. So the healthy person has a right to save himself from diseases arising from the consumption of improper foods. The physician must have to help the patient to deliver his right to safety from the improper foods. In Nidan Sthan, Sage Charka mentions that the treatment that cures a disease but gives rise to some other one cannot be said to be a wholesome treatment. A wholesome treatment is one which cures a disease but never creates any other disease condition. This definition of wholesome treatment is intended to provide the patient with a right to safety during the treatment of his illness. The great trios of Ayurveda that is Sage Charka, Sushruta and Vagbhata have mentioned that the patients suffering from Unmad and Apasmar should be paid attention to keep them away from water and fire and should be restricted from climbing over trees and mountains. These activities can be fatal to such patients as they can harm themselves by such things. So they deserve a right to safety from such conditions. Sage Charka in the Chikitsa Sthan of Charak Samhita has advised to keep in hand an umbrella in the daytime and a noisy broken bamboo stick in the night time so as to avoid the snake bites. So every person has a right to safeguard himself from accidental threats and a physician is bound to help him for that purpose. At many places in the Samhita Granthas, the contraindications for many procedures like Panchakarma, Shastrakarma, etc. are given. Also, the contraindications of various medicines have been mentioned like the medicines having hot potency need to be avoided in vulnerable patients like children and pregnant women. These are nothing but the measures for safety of the patients. In Sushrut Samhita, Sage Sushruta has described about the precautions which have to be taken during the use of Shastra, Kshar and Agni Karma. He has also emphasized that a doctor should first practice his skills on the dummies and then only he should enter the medical profession and start his own medical practice. All these advices are intended to safeguard the patients from the possibility of development of hydrogenic artifacts. The second right of consumer is the right to be informed. 
the consumers must be provided with the facts which are needed to make an informed choice also they have a right to be protected against the dishonest or misleading advertising and labeling however this right is not limited to avoid the deception only but the consumers should be provided with adequate information also so that they will be able to act wisely and responsibly in ayurveda it is explained as a basic principle that the patient has to be informed about his illness and also about the treatment modalities to be used especially when the disease condition is incurable the patient or his attendant has to be informed about the incurable nature of his disease even before the initialization of the treatment this is called as pratyakheya chikitsa in such kind of incurable diseases when lack of treatment causes instant death but the chances of successful treatment are also doubtful there was a procedure of taking informed consent from the patient's relatives or the king and then only the physician had to proceed with the treatment of such patients however especially in the medical profession sometimes this right needs to be violated in good faith sometimes when a patient has a major illness or if he lands in a critical condition then the patient cannot be informed about his actual condition even if the doctor knows that the patient has a bad prognosis this fact has to be kept hidden from the patient otherwise the patient might suffer a mental collapse which would make his condition even worse the great trios of ayurveda have described about certain diseases in which the patient has to be deceived during treatment by hiding the true nature of the treatment given however it is done in good faith only and for the welfare of the patient for example in rajyakshma meat of carnivorous animals and birds has to be given to the patient by cheating on him because it is essential as per the demand of his disease condition all these bruhatrays have also mentioned that the patient of unmad should be terrified by fangless snakes or trained and restrained wild animals so that the sensation of fear can take over the mental trauma which is the cause of this disease here again the patient has been deprived of his right to be informed but only with an intention to promote him towards a state of well being the right to choose has been provided to the consumers to make them able to select from a range of products and services offered at competitive prices with an assurance of satisfactory quality however this right has been reformulated as the right to basic goods and services because an unrestrained right to choose for a minority would mean that the majority will be denied of its fair share in various ayurvedic texts we find ample of description about a good physician and also about a bad physician or a quack a good physician is described as prana bhi sarvaidya jivita bhi sarvaidya uttam bhishak and uttam vaidya on the other hand a bad physician or a quack is described by different terminologies like murkha vaidya chadmachar vaidya siddha sadhit vaidya roga bhi sarvaidya 
ಅಜ್ಞವೈದ್ಯ ವೈದ್ಯವಿದಗ್ಧ ಕೂವೈದ್ಯ ತಸ್ಕರ ವೃತ್ತಿ ಶ್ವಪಚ್ ಭಿಷಕ್ ಪಾಶ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಸಚ್ ಫಾಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬಿನ್ ಗೀವನ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಮಿನೇಟ್ ಅ ಗುಡ್ ಫಿಸಿಷಿಯನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ಅ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ಒನ್ ಸೋ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಬಿ ಏಬಲ್ ಟು ಡಿಲಿವರ್ ದೇರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಟು ಚೂಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಪರ್ ಫಿಸಿಷಿಯನ್ ಇನ್ ಸುಶ್ರುತ್ ಸಂಹಿತ ಸೇಜ್ ಸುಶ್ರುತ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೇನ್ಡ್ ದ ಪ್ರೊಸೀಜರ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನೆಸ್ಥೇಷಿಯಾ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ದ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆ್ಯನಿ ಆಪರೇಟಿವ್ ಸರ್ಜರಿ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಡ್ವೈಸ್ಡ್ ದ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಲೀಕರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವನ್ ಹೂ ಈಸ್ ಅಕಸ್ಟಮ್ ಟು ಇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸಂಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೇವ್ರೇಟ್ ಫುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ರೈಟ್ ಟು ಚೂಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪೇಷಂಟ್ಸ್ there are also some references in ancient samhita texts showing an unrestrained right to choose for a minority like kings and rich people for them there had been some specially chosen provisions like collection of equipments for panchakarma procedure for consumption of liquor special purgatives like trivrudashtak etc however reformulation of this right as the right to basic goods and services can be seen in the ancient times as well so that the majority should not be denied of its fair share for that purpose certain provisions for poor people had been provided like collection of panchakarma equipments by the king for the general public and provision of other simple purgatives for the common people the consumers have a right to be heard so that their interests are represented in the making and execution of government policies as well as in other economic policies it implies to be heard and represented in the development of products and services before they are produced or set up it also implies that the consumer should be able to take his grievance to appropriate authorities for redressal where he should be heard effectively in narad smruti we find references about the formulation of judiciary bodies which had offered the right to be heard to the public the judiciary body was similar to the court of law which comprised of the king chief judge assessors accountant writer or scribe etc also there were hierarchical judiciary bodies like gram sabha pur sabha and raj sabha which provided the right to be heard as well as provided with the provisions for appeals in kautilya arthashastra adhikaran name kantak shodhanam has explained about the body of council which consisted of three pradeshta that means magistrates and three amatya that is government officers from the ministry the provision of such a council had provided the public with a right to be heard and solve the disputes accordingly the consumers have also been provided with a right to redress so that they receive a fair settlement of just claims including compensation for misrepresentation shoddy goods or unsatisfactory services this right has been generally accepted by international organization of consumers union since the early 1970s and also by consumer protection act in india since 1986 in ayurvedic texts there is no direct description about redressal for some standard goods or services but there is clear indication that 
द मेडिकल प्रोफेशन वॉज अंडर सुपरविजन ऑफ द किंग इन कौटिल्य अर्थशास्त्र वी फाइंड द रेफरेंस अबाउट पेनॉल्टीज फॉर द मिस्टेक्स ऑफ द फिजिशियंस अ सीरियस पेशेंट हैड टू बी ट्रीटेड ओनली आफ्टर रिपोर्टिंग टू द कंसर्ड ऑथोरिटीज अदरवाइज द फिजिशियन वॉज लाइबल टू पनिशमेंट इन केस ऑफ डेथ ऑफ द पेशेंट ऑल्सो वी फाइंड द रेफरेंसेस इन कौटिल्य अर्थशास्त्र इट सेल्फ अबाउट द रिड्रेसल फॉर क्रिमिनल एबॉर्शन एंड ऑल्सो अबाउट ट्रीटिंग एन इंश्योर्ड पेशेंट और एन इपिडेमिक पेशेंट सीक्रेटली विदाउट रिपोर्टिंग टू द कंसर्ड ऑथोरिटीज इन नारद स्मृति देर इज अ प्रोविजन ऑफ रिड्रेसल फॉर फॉल्टी गुड्स एज वेल which can be said to be a pioneer application of consumer protection act the faulty goods had to be either exchanged by the trader or the price of the goods had to be paid back to the customer also this text explains about the complete judicial procedure of the time which clearly shows that the consumers had been awarded with the right to redress the consumers have a right to education so that they acquire the knowledge and skills which are needed to make informed confident choices about goods and services and also they would become aware of the basic consumer rights and responsibilities Sage Charka had stated that one should acquire the knowledge from various advices given by after that is a trusted knowledgeable person and should obey those advices in his day to day life it saves a person from many unborn diseases and cures many pre existing diseases as well this denotes that consumer education was very much important in that period also again sid charka has mentioned in swedadhyay of his sutra sthan that for jentak swed the patient should be educated about the safety measures while entering the swed kuti and should also be educated about the after therapy measures we find a number of references in ayurvedic samhita texts for maintaining the health of the public like dincharya rutucharya sadvrutta palan ahar vidhi vidhan and achar rasayan are some of these advices which offer the right to consumer education under the right to consumer education only people were always being educated about the things that are important for their health such as sarvam anyam parityaja shariram anupalayet tad abhave hi bhavanam sarva bhavah sharirinam which means one should leave all his other works behind and should concentrate on the nourishment of his own body because in the absence of a healthy body all the other pleasures of the world are countless also hitashi san mitashi sat kal bhoji jitendriya pashyan rogan bahun kashtan buddhiman vishmashanat means a wise person should always eat the healthy foods only and that also in proper quantity and at the proper time moreover he should keep control over his organs because the development of various diseases is dependent on the improper food habits only the international organization of consumers union has provided the consumers with a right to healthy environment as well which hasn't been provided by consumer protection act in india this right ensures that they can live and work in an environment 
which is non threatening to the well being of present and future generations it points out towards a physical environment that will enhance the quality of life the great trios of ayurveda have described about the qualities which are required to be possessed by a doctor nurse patient and drugs they have specifically emphasized on the quality of shuchi which means to maintain the proper hygienic conditions this quality has to be possessed by both the doctor and the nursing staff it points out towards the right to a healthy environment also these acharyas have described about various establishments like aturale means hospital vranitagar means trauma center kuti for jentaksved and sutikagar means maternity home they have mentioned the guidelines to maintain a healthy environment in these establishments thus they had fulfilled this right for their patients even in the ancient times though it hasn't been legally provided now by the consumer protection act in india again the international organization of consumers union has also provided the right to satisfaction of basic needs which is not available under the consumer protection act in india the consumers have a right to have access to basic essential goods and services like adequate food clothing shelter healthcare education public utilities water and sanitation this right implies that the articles of basic need must be ensured to every consumer in case of healthcare since sushruta has mentioned that even the poor and forlorn people have to be supplied with the basic needs of healthcare the bruhatrai of ayurveda have described about some special provisions for kings and rich people however the right to satisfaction of basic needs was not denied to the common man though there were provisions for establishment of well equipped panchakarma hospitals for the king and wealthy people the poor people were also treated in such hospitals and the basic panchakarma equipments and drugs were provided by the king for general public also in case of a commonly occurring disease like prameha the rich as well as the poor were provided with different treatment protocols as per their financial condition the rich people were provided with various prameha yoga which were slightly costly while the poor patients of prameha were provided with cost effective remedies like exercises agriculture a walk for 100 yojan or other ways of physical exertion like digging a well thus the poor people were not neglected and their right to satisfaction of basic needs was delivered promptly in this way the consumers are provided with these valuable rights which they perfectly deserve though the foundation of these rights has been laid well beforehand in the ancient times as observed from a number of references it's quite obvious that these consumer rights were already granted to the patients in ancient india in india the consumer protection act has provided only first six rights to the consumers while the last two rights specified by international organization of consumers union 
have not been granted to the consumers. Now, as a most recent development, before a few days only, the Consumer Protection Act of 1986 has been repealed and the new Consumer Protection Act 2019 has been enacted from 20th July 2020. However, even the new act has mentioned only the six rights of consumers. Therefore, the consumer movement in India might progress in the direction of satisfaction of these two consumer rights which were already in practice in the ancient times but have not been indexed in the present day Consumer Protection Act. So that's all for today. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Have a nice day.